So I'm going to speak about the surgical options available for patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease, such as heartburn, who happen to be obese. Um, traditional anti-reflux surgery we think may be of higher risk, risk and therefore bariatric surgery, which will help both the obesity and the reflux, may be considered. So I'm going to talk about the types of surgery that might be available. <coughs> We know that there's been a parallel increase in the prevalence of both gastroesophageal reflux disease and reflux type symptoms over the last few decades. If we look at the uh, graph on the left hand side of this slide, you can see that this represents the obesity rates in America over the last few decades and we can see that the obesity rates started to rise in the 1980s, the early 80s. Currently about a third of US adults are obese. In the UK, it's probably about a quarter of US adults. In the same sort of time frame, we can see that uh, the prevalence of uh, gastroesophageal reflux type symptoms uh, has increased, and it's been quoted at over 26%. But also, we can see that the uh, complications of reflux, such as Barrett's esophagus or esophageal adenocarcinoma, have also increased. So there seems to have been an increase in both of these conditions. Now the next question is, is this a coincidental increase or is it causa or causation? Does obesity cause reflux? I think this is an interesting, quite large um, epidemiological study which looked at 12,000 US nurses and gauged the severity of their reflux symptoms and uh, analyzed this against their body mass index. And it did find that there was a significant increase in the risk of developing reflux type symptoms in people who were overweight and obese. So those with a BMI of over 35 had a 35% chance of having reflux type symptoms, but normal weight patients had a 10 to 20% chance. So BMI increases confers an increased risk of reflux. In addition to this, an added layer of risk um, is uh, is the distribution of the obesity. So if a patient has a central or male type android distribution of their obesity, almost like an apple shaped distribution, they will be conferred an extra risk of developing reflux. We know pathophysiology of reflux in obese patients is different. If we just uh, remind ourselves of the reflux uh, in normal patients, um, some reflux is due to um, disordered esophageal motility and some is due to gastric emptying problems. The majority of reflux in normal weight subjects is due to failure somehow of the lower esophageal sphincter. Either a deficient pressure, a axial separation of the lower esophageal sphincter or, and the crowal fibers, a, a high dysonia, or most commonly TLOSR, so transient relaxations of the lower esophageal sphincter in response to stretching of the fundus, the belch reflux. <clears throat> in obese patients, particularly those with central obesity, like uh, this um, extreme example of this man here, the uh, visceral fat plus organomegaly and the elasticity, elasticity of the supporting stretch ab abdominal wall musculature leads to a significant increase in intra-abdominal pressure and a concomitant increase in intergastric pressure. This leads to a significantly increased thoracoabdominal pressure gradient, a transdiaphragmatic trans pressure gradient, encouraging reflux. In response, people of higher BMI actually have a resting lower esophageal sphincter pressure, which is higher. However, this seems to be quite often separated from the crural fibers in that there is a 50% hiatal hernia rate. Of most note is that TLOSRs are more frequent in obese subjects than in normal control subjects. This may be due to overeating, air swallowing, uh, or a number of factors. But TLOSRs seem to be an important, uh, have an important role in reflux in obese patients. <clears throat> so if we come to the options available, so the traditional type of anti-reflux surgery, so the Nissen fundiplication or the anterior or the two-page fundiplication, in obese patients 
may be prone to technical difficulties. We know that of these patients, 40% of them will have an enlarged and fatty liver. We know that there is going to be uh, infiltration by fat of the esophageal gastric junction, making surgery technically more difficult. And we know sometimes with the seriously of these patients that this thick abdominal wall uh, can uh, create ergonomic problems for laparoscopic surgeons, the laparoscopic approach. We also uh, know, and there's a, a, a range of research on this, that any type of abdominal wall hernia, be it incisional hernias or inguinal hernias, have a worse outcome in obese subjects. And we try and avoid operating on people uh, and doing tension repairs on people with a body mass index of over 35. So what is the effect of anti traditional anti-reflux surgery on obese patients? Well, there are several small studies that show no difference between obesity and uh, normal weight subjects as far as weight outcome is concerned. But this study uh, really probably is the largest and it looked at a three-year recurrence of symptoms of reflux in 224 patients following traditional anti-reflux surgery. And it found that um, there was a significant increased uh, recurrence of symptoms in patients who were obese prior to surgery. This study also showed, and other studies have showed, that there is a higher complication rate uh, to anti-reflux surgery in obese subjects. So traditional anti-reflux surgery, we, when we're considering this, we need to understand that it's probably, got, uh, it's probably less effective uh, and it probably has a higher complication rate. <coughs> And this brings us on to considering bariatric surgery to help people uh, lose weight. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the uh, sleeve constrictor in the gastric bypass today. This is a, a chart showing the changes in uh, popularity of different procedures over time as far as bariatrics is concerned. And we can see the gastric bypass has always been fairly popular. The gastric band reached an idea of popularity probably seven or eight years ago. And this has been superseded by the sleeve gastrectomy, which probably now is the most popular operation offered today. So I'm just going to talk about the sleeve and the bypass. As far as the effect of the sleeve gastrectomy on reflux symptoms is concerned, there is a lot of controversy about this. There is a perception that the sleeve is a pro-reflux operation, i.e. sleeve gastrectomy causes reflux symptoms. But actually, if you look at meta-analyses of symptoms following a sleeve gastrectomy, you'll find there are a few papers that do indeed suggest that there is uh, an increase in symptoms, namely heartburn and uh, dysphagia following uh, uh, sleeve surgery. But also there are a number of papers that suggest an improvement in symptoms following sleeve surgery. And I think we need to bear in mind that we may be looking at the wrong thing here. Um, after a sleeve, if someone eats a bolus of food, of food that is a little bit too viscous, we will see that there is uh, a secondary esophageal peristalsis as, as the esophagus tries to push this food through the new sleeve gastrectomy, the gastric tube. Um, this can cause retrosternal discomfort and dysphagia, difficulty swallowing. So these symptoms, which are normal side effects of the sleeve gastrectomy if you eat too fast, can mimic reflux. So I think that we're looking at the wrong thing here and we need more objective measurements. At the moment there is not a body of evidence to suggest that the sleeve objectively causes reflux. My current take on sleeve gastrectomy, having uh, operated on many patients uh, at UCLH with mild or moderate reflux, um, would be that actually the outcomes are, are quite favorable following re anti-reflux surgery. And if we go back and look at the actual cause of reflux in um, particularly obese subjects, the predominant cause is TLOSR, so transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter in response to fundal stretching. When we perform a sleeve gastrectomy, we actually resect the fundus. So this excision of the fundus probably negates the trigger of TLOSRs and therefore this major cause of reflux may be prevented. And this may be, may be the reason that with patients, it's only that I and my colleague, colleagues operate on, reflux in the majority, probably 98% of patients, is not an issue following this procedure. 
if you know how to counsel them, if they're getting dysphagia, they just need to chew slower. I think one of the reasons for the differences in results um, and outcome in sleeve is maybe technical differences, di differences between surgeons. Some surgeons will leave a bit of a dog ear at the angle of hips right at the top in order to try and prevent this uh, terrible complication occasionally of uh, sleeve leak up in the angle of hips. This can then lead to the formation of a neofundus and I think this neofundus probably can trigger TLOSRs much earlier and the, this triggering can be amplified with even small amounts of food. So this brings us on to the gastric bypass and I would suggest that this is the um, gold standard procedure for um, obese patients with uh, reflux disease. By creating a gastric pouch we exclude really most of the parietal and acid secreting cell mass of the stomach. We do a biliary diversion so there's no biliary reflux. In addition the gastric bypass confers, confers fantastic weight loss uh, and extended weight loss for patients. We know from studies that there is a 96% improvement or resolution of reflux type symptoms. I'm going to present this case of a Caucasian female, 45 years old, with quite severe symptoms of reflux, recently diagnosed type 2 diabetes, a body mass index of 38, she was 110 kilograms, uh, and a recent OGD which showed a moderate sized hiatus hernia and grade B esophagitis. And we performed a contrast swallow before surgery just in order to, to, to help us not have any surprises at the time of surgery, and it just did, did indeed confirm the presence of this moderate-sized hiatus hernia above the diaphragm. <laughs> 